Welcome back, everyone. This video is a continuation of the kitchen design we began last time. If you haven't watched the previous video, I highly recommend doing so. It will give you a clear understanding of how we built this kitchen from the ground up and how we've arrived at this stage. In this video, we will focus on adding the final touches and rendering, an essential step in any design process. As you can see, all the furniture is already in place. I will now proceed with adding decorative elements and lighting. This countertop or island design was created specifically based on the client's request. If you'd like to learn how I achieved this design, I will be making a separate video demonstrating the process, including how to create the ceiling beams. For the cabinets, I have incorporated a special type of door with a subtle detail. You can easily add this through the kitchen and bath tool where you'll find a wide selection of cabinet door details to choose from. Additionally, I have replaced the oven and installed a different sink. Now, let's add some shelves to this wall. You can find a variety of shelving options in the library, or you can create a custom organic shelf using the custom modeling tool. Simply resize the shelves to fit your space, and if needed, add additional shelves. For the backsplash, I designed a custom tile feature. You can do the same by going to the wall editor, using the line tool to mark where you want the backsplash, and then applying your chosen material. To make the backsplash more pronounced, you can adjust the extrusion slightly so that it extends outward. As mentioned in the previous video, materials can be easily copied from walls, floors, or objects and pasted onto the kitchen and bath items. For example, if you don't like the marble on your countertop, simply copy a preferred material from another surface and paste it onto the countertop. Now, I'm adding decorative elements, plants, and accessories to bring an organic feel to the space. We're aiming for a rustic, wabi-sabi aesthetic, so feel free to incorporate as many natural elements as you like. Since we have wooden ceiling beams, adding hanging plants will enhance the overall warmth and character of the design. The public library offers a wide selection of hanging plants, so choose the ones that best complement your style. Next, we will add lighting elements, including spotlights and pendant lights. Any type of lighting you envision for your kitchen can be incorporated here. I am now placing spotlights throughout the space, ensuring that all areas are well lit. Additionally, I am adding spotlights inside this wall niche. If you're curious about how I created this niche, it was done using the wall editor. Simply draw a rectangle, apply an extrusion, and refine the shape using the offset tool. I will show you an example here. It's really not that complicated. You can even add hidden lights, and you can check my previous videos to see how to do that. You can also add shelf lighting, choosing between spotlights or strip lights. When we move on to rendering, I'll show you how to use strip lighting effectively to create a soft and elegant glow. Some strip lights can appear too harsh, but I will demonstrate how to adjust their intensity for a natural ambience. Now that I've added all the necessary decorations and details, including an organic style chandelier and books on the shelves, I will fine tune their placement later. Once you are satisfied with everything, we can move on to the rendering process. To begin rendering, you can select from several lighting modes. Normal lights, realistic indoor, daytime manual lighting, custom lighting adjustments. For efficiency, I will use real-time rendering, which allows you to see changes instantly. Choose a daytime or nighttime setting based on your preference, then confirm. The advantage of real-time rendering is that it saves time 
and allows you to preview material adjustments directly within the render. For example, if you are unsure about the countertop material, you can change it within the rendering tool. The same applies to the glass, walls, ceiling, cabinets, and appliances. However, Note that elements created using the custom modeling tool cannot be modified within the real-time render. You will need to return to the custom model editor to adjust them. Now, I will demonstrate an example by changing the countertop material. If you don't like your current countertop, simply select a new material and the update will reflect instantly in the render. I have chosen a green earthy stone for the island and paired it with a rustic tile backsplash. This tool alone proves why Kuham is a game changer for designers and architects, offering everything you need in one powerful platform. See it in action through the link below and experience the full potential with a yearly plan. For ambitious teams striving for excellence, the Leap Plan delivers the ultimate all-in-one solution. And if you're a solo designer, don't miss out. Use code EVERYTHINGDESIGN for an exclusive 72% off on all popular plans. You can apply tiles easily by selecting your desired material, holding shift, and applying it to the wall. I have also changed the oven's material, as I didn't like the excessive reflection. Now it has a black metal finish. Another cool thing is that you can copy the material from the countertop to the sink so that it feels like you have those high-end sinks that are made from the countertop itself. And I have updated the faucet to a bronze tone for a more cohesive look. Remember, everything can be adjusted except for custom-modeled objects, such as the ceiling beams and island details, which must be modified separately in the custom modeling tool. Now that we've finalized the materials, let's adjust the lighting. In real-time rendering, all previously placed light sources are automatically included. However, some unnecessary lights, such as those placed inside closed cabinets, can be removed. Deleting unnecessary lights can significantly impact the final ambience, so be sure to check the render as you make adjustments. Once satisfied with the lighting, we can fine-tune the environment settings. The chosen environment will affect the interior lighting. Some settings may make the space appear brighter or darker, so select an environment that aligns with your desired atmosphere. Even if you like a particular environment, you can fine-tune its parameters. Outdoor brightness, ambient brightness, Tone adjustments. A cool tone setting can create a sterile look, which isn't ideal for a kitchen. I typically keep the tone natural. Next, adjust the sunlight position to control how shadows fall across the space. A higher brightness results in harsher sunlight, so I generally keep it at 50 to 60 for a natural effect, especially with a cloudy sky. For example, I have positioned the sunlight behind a tree to create dynamic shadows, adding depth and realism to the scene. Now, let's adjust artificial lighting for a warmer ambience. If you have a rectangular light shining from a window, make sure to adjust both its brightness and scattering angle. Setting the scattering angle to zero will create an overly sharp and harsh light on the opposite side, which can feel unnatural. To soften the effect, keep the scattering angle around 51 and reduce the brightness accordingly. 
Another interesting technique is tilting the light slightly so it casts a subtle glow only on the countertop, creating the illusion of sunlight gently bathing the surface. This effect adds warmth and depth to the scene, making the lighting feel more intentional and atmospheric. I noticed that the spotlights were casting a harsh light due to the wrong type of spotlight being used. Instead, I am replacing them with Spotlight 10, which provides a softer, more diffused glow. Of course, adjust the brightness accordingly if you are going for this look. However, for undershelf lighting, I prefer using rectangular lights instead of spotlights to create this effect. First, delete any unnecessary existing lights, then place a rectangular light beneath the shelves. Slightly tilt the light so that it casts a soft glow on the wall. Adjust the brightness and color temperature for a cozy effect. I prefer a warm orange light, but you can customize it to your liking. Also, make sure the scattering angle is set correctly. A zero degree scattering angle will create an overly sharp light effect, which looks unnatural. Instead, I set it to 45 or higher for a more natural diffusion. And the result is really beautiful and elegant. Another detail that elevates the space is adding soft underlighting to the island. To achieve this, duplicate the rectangular light used for the shelves. Place it into position just under the top side, then rotate it. You be left with this calm glow effect, which is very high end. For a final touch, I am also adding a rectangular light above the plants, creating a warm glow on the plants and the wall. With these refinements, the lighting now feels organic, elegant, and immersive. The interplay between warm, soft lighting and natural shadows creates a rich atmosphere that enhances the kitchen's aesthetic. Keep adding lights wherever you think is necessary and experiment until you find your perfect vision. Once all the necessary lights are in place, the next step is selecting the perfect angle. This is where smart views come into play. You can choose an ideal perspective, hit render, and instantly generate a high quality image. Before proceeding, I'll quickly apply the same material here since I had forgotten to do so. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel to follow our journey as we furnish this home, transforming it into a serene, rustic sanctuary with organic, natural elements. Stay tuned, as we'll also be furnishing the entire apartment in the future.
Now, once everything is set, you can fine tune the exposure and indoor brightness, both of which significantly impact the ambience of the space. Increasing the exposure makes the scene brighter, while lowering it darkens the environment. Keeping it around zero or slightly above ensures a balanced look. Similarly, adjust the indoor brightness until you achieve the perfect mood. For post-processing, you can enhance the final image with built-in presets such as Primary, Standard, Contrast, and Gorgeous, each affecting the overall appearance differently. Once everything is adjusted to your liking, simply hit Render. At this stage, I'm demonstrating the process, but if you'd like to see the final results, make sure to subscribe. I'll be posting both video and image renders of this kitchen. There are still refinements to be made, but by the end, we'll have a beautifully designed kitchen. For now, I'm showing you how to create a warm, organic, and natural aesthetic. Another important feature I must mention is depth of field. This is a powerful tool that allows you to blur the background or foreground, creating a stunning cinematic effect. By enabling it and selecting Edit Focus Point, you can pinpoint the area of focus while the rest of the image gradually blurs. You can also control the fuzziness of the blur. Experiment with different focus points to see what works best. Just be careful not to overdo the blurriness, as excessive blur can make the render look unnatural. Keeping it soft and subtle results in a more professional and visually appealing image. In this render, I'm focusing on the plant, causing the background and foreground to blur naturally. This tool is excellent for achieving a dramatic, professional finish without needing additional post-processing. Kuham has truly outdone itself with this feature. I use it frequently to elevate my renders. I hope you found this video helpful. I'll be sharing more renders of this kitchen once I finalize the details, and I might also post short video renders. Stay tuned. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, and don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. In future videos, I'll also be demonstrating how to design ceiling beams and a customized island. Thank you for watching, and see you in the next video.